Hello, thanks for listening to the Go Beyond Disruption podcast, sharing insights from inside the accounting and finance profession that help you stay ahead of the curve, whatever sector you work in. This episode is slightly unusual because this last Sunday was International Accounting Day. Why was it so important? How did accounting as we know it develop since ancient times to what it is today? You're about to find out in this special Accounting Day retrospective episode of the Go Beyond Disruption podcast, where we start with a definition. What is accounting? It's defined as a system of recording and summarizing business and financial transactions. So we know that. But where did the definition start? Well, the clue is on the calendar. This weekend was the 523rd anniversary of the publication of a really important work. And that was in the 15th century by an Italian mathematician, Luca Pacioli. He was born in Tuscany in 1445. And Pacioli was a Franciscan monk, a friar. So he's often referred to simply as Friar Luca. And it was a Around this week, sometime between Sunday, 10th November, and the 20th of November, this weekend, that he published the first book which outlined the system that we know today as double entry bookkeeping. And that is why he is often called the father of accounting. And even though he didn't actually invent the system, Pacioli did take the double entry system that had been in use for centuries and was the first person to formally put it down on paper. And what he was doing was describing the system of debit and credit entries for transactions, which were methods widely used by traders in Venice, where he lived, and in fact, around the whole of the Mediterranean during the Renaissance era. So that was about the 15th century. And the book we're talking about, the one whose publishing date had been chosen for International Accounting Day, wasn't actually a whole book. In fact, it was just part of one he wrote all about maths. And that book is generally referred to as the Summa de Arithmetica, the full title translated into English is everything about arithmetic, geometry, and proportions. And in that was a section on accounting. It was uh, just one of five sections in the book, but that vital section, only 27 pages long, included most of what we know as the accounting cycle as we'd recognize it today. And that essentially became the world's first and only accounting textbook for the next century. So that's well into the 16th century. But accounting's intriguing past begins way before the 15th century. In fact, it goes back to the 5th century before the Common Era, about 7,000 years ago. The Mesopotamian Empire in Western Asia used accounting systems to track goods being exchanged between ancient temples. And then the ancient Egyptians adapted receipt records from clay tablets to more practical papyrus, which is a bit more like paper. And then the ancient Greeks used advanced record keeping to help build engineering marvels that we can still see today, things like the Parthenon in Athens. And of course, what did the Romans do for us? Well, they did quite a bit for accounting because it was accounting principles that helped them develop the system of commerce and tax that helped the Romans build their global empire. And that's why many accounting terms have Latin roots. For example, the term debit comes from the Latin word debitum, which means that which is owing. And credit comes from creditum, which is defined as something entrusted to another or a loan. And then between the fall of the Roman Empire and the Middle Ages, almost a thousand years, nothing much changed. But the importance of accounting did expand in the Middle Ages, especially in the 13th century as Europe was moving towards a monetary economy. And then, of course, shortly after that, Luca Pacioli wrote his book in 1494. And then through the Middle Ages, the field of accounting developed, the Renaissance period saw growth, and then in the mid-19th century, the Industrial Revolution here in England, Scotland, and that part of the United Kingdom uh, saw an unprecedented explosion in the number and the size of companies which operated across the world. They all needed strong accounting departments to underpin all aspects of their business operations. And then in the 19th century here in England, Queen Victoria signed a royal charter making accounting an officially recognized profession, and that moved accountancy into the modern, organized profession that we know it to be today. So that's why this November 10th was International Accounting Day. It marked the date over five centuries ago that the Franciscan monk and mathematician Luca Pacioli, who is often called the father of accounting, published his book, The Summa de Arithmetica. And that's why all modern accounting and finance practitioners, in fact, all users of financial information at all, still work with a system first laid out by that Renaissance-era mathematician friar. Luca Pacioli is the man we remember on International Accounting Day for his foundational role in the development of accounting as we know it today. 
And you can read more about International Accounting Day by following links in our show notes. And one of those will take you to a dedicated article packed with answers to the question, why did you become an accountant? Where you'll hear stories like this. I became a CPA because I wanted to help people's dreams come true. Dreams often start with a solid financial footprint and CPAs are the best at helping people achieve their financial dreams so that their clients are able to pay for their children to go to college and achieve their college dreams or buy their dream vacation home or even retire earlier. Plus, I became a CPA because I really like to work with people and connect with them so that I'm part of their team in terms of their financial and tax planning needs. The CPA profession is extremely rewarding and I'm grateful for the experiences I've had. Plus, it has allowed me ample opportunities to grow and prosper and work-life balance so I can make time for all of the things that I enjoy. Why did you become an accountant? That's just one of many specially recorded videos on the page you can find in our show notes. Uh, you can also click through to a special blog written by our own resident historian, Dr. Martin Farah. He's written a very interesting article which outlines much more about how the history of our profession doesn't start or stop in the 15th century. He's touched on many of the things that I've just told you about and could also include things you probably didn't know about accounting. For example, how when the Chicago police couldn't stop him, it was actually accountants from the FBI that finally brought down notorious 1930s gangster Al Capone, who went to jail for tax evasion. Uh, you might discover how it's very likely the first words ever written down in history were written by an accountant. Or even that without the accountant, nobody could win an Oscar film award or chew bubblegum. Or that accountants helped write the Bible. It's true. Several of the Christian Gospels were written by former tax collectors. And in fact, St. Matthew, the apostle, is the patron saint of accountants, bookkeepers and tax collectors. And that's because before he became an apostle, Matthew was a tax collector in the ancient town of Capernaum. So all of that and more is at your fingertips. Just click on the links in our show notes. They'll help you find out all about the history of accounting. And of course, by the time the next International Accounting Day rolls around, which will be Tuesday, 10th November 2020, uh, you'll be much more up to date. So Happy and slightly belated International Accounting Day. From the AICPA and SEMA office in the heart of the City of London, I'm Kyle Hannan. Until next time, goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beyond Disruption, brought to you by the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. Learn more about today's topic at AICPA-CIMA.com forward slash disruption. This podcast is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants or any of its subsidiaries or affiliates. It is provided with the understanding that the association, its affiliates, and subsidiaries are not engaged in rendering legal, accounting, or other professional services. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The association, its subsidiaries and affiliates make no representations, warranties, or guarantees as to and assume no responsibility for the content or application of the material contained herein and expressly disclaim all liability for such damages arising out of the use of, reference to, or reliance on such material.